Welcome to the Women Only News Network. I'm your host, Jonna Stewart. And I'm Joan Oliver. Welcome. And tonight we have a special guest. <laughs> he is the real Colonel Sanders. So I want to welcome you, Colonel. Thanks for being our guest this evening. My pleasure. Oh, it's My pleasure. so nice of you to be here. Um, did you come all the way from Kentucky? No, I don't live in Kentucky anymore. I live in Cuba now. Oh, you live in Cuba. Cuba, Cuba as they say down there. Oh, Cuba. okay. Yeah. That, that explains sort of the Hemingway style of your chapeau, may right. I say. <laughs> a Tom Wolfian vibe. Yeah, yeah, I sort of have a... Uh, you're by far one of the sexiest Colonel Sanders I've seen in a long time. Oh, well, you're a fine little now. chicken yourself, She's let me tell getting a little... <laughs> Woo! I think I'm in the middle of something Woo! about to explode Woo! here. Uh, <laughs> speaking of explosions... Um, I, I just wanted to know why you think you're the real Colonel Sanders. I think that's rather obvious, isn't it? I am the real Colonel Sanders. Oh, you are? I've been the Colonel Sanders since the day I was born, although I wasn't called the Colonel <laughs> then. Uh, I was called Harlan. That's my real name, uh -huh, Harlan, Harlan Sanders. Uh, but then I was named Colonel a few years later, and uh, I go by Colonel now because I'm a Kentucky Colonel. It only took you a few years to become a Colonel? Well, it was a gift what? from the from the governor of Kentucky. Oh, he liked okay. my chicken so much, he made me a colonel. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So, oh, I, I want to ask I, you. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was wearing my hat indoors. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh well. That's a little rude, especially yeah. for a southern man. Yeah, that's I'm having right. a bad hair day today. Oh, I just I got see. it cut. And <laughs> I off, see, I so. see. <laughs> well, you know, I don't mind if you wear your hat indoors. It's okay, you know, just. Well, it's you can take off. your pants off too if you were going to take your hat off. That's okay. I didn't know it was that kind of show. Oh, pants optional here all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Cameramen, do you have your known. pants on? None of the cameramen have their pants on. You can't tell if but they don't have their pants on. No, no, pants optional always here. Uh, so back to um, being the colonel. I, I'm kind of wondering, what do you think about all these people that are impersonating you now? I actually pulled a few clips of some of the actors that are impersonating you. Uh, you know, George Hamilton, Jim Gaffigan, John Goodman, uh, Norm Macdonald. Daryl Hammond, the list goes on and on. All fine actors, uh, except George Hamilton. He wears too much suntan, uh, fake suntan lotion or whatever yeah. it is, makes his face on. You know, we have a clip of, of, of George Hamilton. Do you, do, mind you? If we, do you mind if we preview that with you? Not at all. Okay, I'll see if we can. Oh, look, see, there's, there's one of your Kentucky Fried Chicken hey there, headquarters. Folks. There's it's George. Me, the extra yeah. Uh, yeah, I love original recipe, but in this is so Looks a little pudgy around the midsection. He does. And his tie is undone. Yeah. That's all about it. Gentlemen George always wears a tie. Of your chicken, I think. Well, it's not my chicken anymore. I sold the franchise years ago, and, oh. and they don't really make the same product as they did when I was running it. I see. The chicken nowadays isn't quite so good. Yeah. So what do you think of these chickens that their breasts are so large? Yeah, that they can't walk. I have Why the do problem, chickens need to walk? Yeah, they kind of strut, don't they? <laughs> there you go. Like they kind of—they don't really walk no, anyway, Joan. They, they slither like worms. They can't. Oh yeah, get they up have to. They have to do that. They have to just. I <laughs> want some more. Isn't it more like a? Hello. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, what about these it's hormone injected sad. It's chickens? It's disgusting. Yeah, well, they didn't do that sort of thing in my me. day. We used good old fashioned country chickens mm -hmm. that knew their place in the world. Yeah, they yeah. were plucking, weren't they? Country chickens that were yeah. just kind of plucking. That's right, a nice right. little joke. Instead I like that. Instead of turning them into these uh, beasts, silicone injected chickens yes. or whatever they put in them. Yeah. yeah. I can't even walk. Uh, you ever notice how you buy a chicken, like you can buy one that's already cooked in the store, in the grocery store, and you get it home and you put a knife in it, it goes Pfft. It's like, it was full of air. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'd never find that with one of my chickens. I have a special recipe that I use and a special pressure cooker that I use to cook it in, uh -huh. and it makes the most wonderful flavored chicken you ever had. Oh, That's well, you have good. to invite us over yeah. sometime. Well, I, I would, except uh, I, I don't it, eat chicken anymore. Oh. You don't? No, I've become a vegetarian now. Oh, that's oh. very smart of you. Yeah, well, yeah. it's actually because of my new girlfriend. Oh. Yeah, she, she thought that oh, eating all this meat has made me age. And uh, oh. actually, just the opposite. I, I look very good, I think, for my age. I think so. In fact, we thought you were dead. Yes. Like a lot of people did. That's, that's, a, that's a myth that was that was purported by the corporation that bought me out. Oh, you see, uh, they, they didn't want me. Yeah, they didn't want me around, so they killed me off. Like, like on a soap opera, uh, so, they would just be like, "No more yeah, Colonel. We're just gonna, we're just gonna substitute these other actors, and nobody will know the difference. We'll just, 
You know, it's like the Darren's on Bewitched, you know, yes. first they had like one Darren and then they got another one that looked just like the That's first one. And right. so they're thinking, oh, the audience will never know the difference between Dick York and the other Dick. He was and also it was, Dick. It was like a sci-fi episode, yeah. you know, because people switch out on you. It's like I know. Philip K. Dick all over again. Right. Anyhow. Uh, so what about John Goodman? I actually haven't seen John Goodman play you, but I, I know we have a clip, I think, if we can. Well, I do like John clip. Goodman. He's a fine actor. Fine he actor is. and a good fellow. Oh, there he is. He looks handsome he is. man, too. Yeah, look he at looks that. great as Colonel man. as you, doesn't he? Oh. It's kind he, of a Santa Claus meets Colonel Sanders, yeah, isn't he? He's cute. Oh, yeah. You just can't help but love him. I just want to pinch him. Yeah. And he looks like the Colonel on the box. Kind of. A little more jowly, yeah, but... That's true. Well, I weighed a lot more back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, back in, around 1990, when they say I died, I, actually what happened is I went down to the, uh, the state of Florida, uh -huh. to one of those... Uh, Where they have Zika. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's uh, a I terrible virus. Her. Oh, it's a virus. Oh, yeah, you uh, might have met her. <laughs> yeah, no, I went down there for one of those uh, youth recapturing clinics, or whatever they call it. Oh, yeah. Uh, like the we Ponce have de Leon place. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. that's why my hair has been turning dark again. You know, oh, so it's, you used to be white like that. Yes, I see. And you're dark. thinner and Much thinner, we can doing see very your well. chin. Yes. Yeah. Clean shaven almost. Yes. Well, almost. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grow the big mustache back, but my girlfriend didn't like it, so I shaved oh, it off. Oh, that's too bad. Well, yeah. you know, you've got to do what your girlfriend wants, I that's mean. That's true. You know. Yeah, she's not my wife. That's right. That's right. Once she becomes your wife, you don't do anything that she wants. That's just how it goes. So just keep her your girlfriend. You know the life about the colonel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so let's get back to my chicken. Oh, okay, yes. Let's they get stole back to this chicken franchise from me, yes. And it's really yeah. just a travesty. Because uh -huh. what they sell now just, just isn't the same thing. Those biscuits are just horrible. It's looked like they're made out of some kind of paste. It's like wallpaper paste or so something like true. that. And, and the gravy, oh my goodness. It used to be so good. We used real drippings in the gravy. Now I, I think they just get some dirt from the outside or something. Probably. Oh my. Terrible. That's so, why I became a vegetarian. Uh, just, what, let's talk it. about the 11 mm. herbs and spices. I've always wanted to know what those are. Can, yes. you, can you divulge that information? I could, uh -huh. but I'd get sued. Oh, why? Um, I sold all that to the corporation. Well, could you tell oh, us one wow. that we would never expect to be in the chicken? Could you just tell just, us just one teeny one secret that we would never guess? Prune juice. Oh, I that's that. why the chicken made us so regular when we would that's eat it. That's right. Prune I, mean, I, I got that idea from that Dr. Pepper fella. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. He is a doctor after all. Oh yes, of course. Just like How about your just colonel. Just one more. Just one. Just one more spice. Because Purge really is really isn't a so spice. So that's nine out of ten, nine out of eleven left. I guess that would be did fair. You, did you put salt? Was the other one? Oh, salt. Yeah. Oh, that's a giveaway. Of I, course. I was thinking like sporty there. spice, or sporty maybe spice, or yeah, ginger spice, or baboon lint, or something. I mean, I want something interesting. Yeah. Give us the oh, one well. that's the most exciting. Because I heard they actually squeeze beavers, <gasps> and they use the beaver juice. Image. Well, they might do that now. As a flavor Back when I ran the company, we did not squeeze any beavers. Oh, All, no I beavers were harmed in the making of any of my chickens. I guarantee you uh, that. But I hear that beaver juice is really tasty. That, that When you read a label and it says other natural flavors, that's the squeezed beaver juice. Whoa. That's what I heard. Well, I could bet it. I mean, beavers are, you know, they're hefty, hairy, paddly, chewy creatures and spend time in water so they would have juicy juice that's true i think and they're very industrious very damn that's all i got to say about that yeah, right. <laughs> little kentucky humor there yeah. <laughs> oh i get it <laughs> so you are you from uh what city in kentucky are you from oh i'm not from, from kentucky? kentucky i'm oh. from wait a second let me Get out my notes. That's right. Get out your notes. You said you're from Florida. I thought. I thought you went to Florida and you live in Cuba. But I'm 126 I years old now, and I forget a lot of the details. Oh, so, sure. so that's right. I was. Well, I sure love your rabbit uh, yeah, cane such umbrella. Potter on it. Yeah. Potter. So that would be a brown rabbit. We just had an episode uh, where we spoke 
about a black rabbit marrying a white rabbit, and I think that might actually be the rabbit that's produced from that marriage. It could be. And what, how do you feel about black rabbits marrying white rabbits? Being a man from the South. Well, I don't really care who they marry. They're rabbits after all, but they do taste good when they're fried. <gasps> they do, don't they? Oh. There's nothing like a little Haas and Pfeffer to just hit the spot. There oh. you go. Oh, wait, that I thought you were vegetarian. Well, I oh, still have delicious. my, my desires. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. You don't give up. You, you don't just give up a lifelong of eating chicken. So you have lust like that in your without heart. Like oh yes, I lust after others. chickens every day. Mm -hmm. I got a little feather back there just just uh, just for me. Oh, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I forgot where I was born. It was in 1990 or 1890, I should say. And so that's uh, what oh, makes me. Oh, that would make sense. You forget where you were born. If you're born years in old, so. It's somewhere in Indiana. Well, I'd like to get your opinion on the other clip that we have of somebody impersonating you. I think I have one more. I think it's Jim Gaffigan, oh, who boy, I've actually seen live a couple times. He's oh. very funny. You know? I didn't know he was even alive. Oh, yes. He's very much alive. He has his own TV show and stand-up comedy. And, and children. He's, and he's whole lots of children because he's Catholic. He's got five kids. Oh, my and gosh. Yeah. He's, um, he, Is that him? He's not the best-looking Colonel Sanders. Well, That's no, of course him. I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But, he, but he is very funny, and I think he probably would sell your chicken very well. Well, so it's we not my chicken anymore. Franchise. Right. Correct. Sorry about that. Hmm. But, you know, oh, here... See, What's there he is. Oh, he looks like a very funny gentleman. No, no, that's not. That looks like Norm Macdonald to me. That Norm Macdonald. That's Norm Macdonald. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. He's not my favorite. He's not my favorite either. Apparently, he's, he's not their favorite, favorite either. Yeah. <laughs> Norm is kind of like he does the bad you. I think on purpose. He tries not to do a good Colonel Sanders. I think that's mm, maybe how well, he. Let me tell you some money. There is no bad me. Oh, well. <laughs> it's getting hot in here, isn't it? It is getting hot in here. Yes. You don't think yes. I made all them chicken franchises by just selling chicken, did you? <laughs> oh. How well, did you make all those chicken franchises? What's the secret to uh, your success? Eleven spices that nobody knows. Uh, except for we know prune juice. Yes, and beaver lint. Yes. We were supposed to find out about the beaver. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We are good journalists. We are. We uncover everything. We do. We want the people to know. We do. The truth. Yes. Right. So is there anything else you'd like to say to our viewers and the general public? Oh, definitely. Don't eat at McDonald's. Oh. Mm. That Ronald McDonald's really is a advice. weirdo. I don't like him at all. Yeah, he is a little bit of a pedophilia kind yeah. of oh, clown. Yeah. Clowns scare the yes. tie out of oh, me. I don't know why goodness, parents yes. let their children around clowns. Weird little little men with nothing better to do. Their food has just mm -hmm. devolved into kind of a sickly goo that is only 50% real food. I just don't, okay, we're probably going to get sued. But I, you know what? Just my opinion. Ronald McDonald can always come on the show and we can, you know, we can true. talk to him. He's not dead, is he? He's still alive, right? Yes, of course. He and he has be. big feet, and you know what they say about clowns with big feet. Big shoes. That's true. And big hands. Uh, so we really appreciate you coming on our show and, um, you know, anytime you're in the neighborhood, you look us up and, you know, yeah, yeah. we'll go have a bourbon or something. And yeah. Maybe, bourbon. Yeah. Mm, I love bourbon. Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky bourbon, I hope. Kentucky bourbon. Oh, yes. Well, our <laughs> bourbon always comes from Kentucky. Yeah, well, it did yeah. when I was around. Yes. But now I live in Cuba, so we right. don't have bourbon there. We drink Cuba rum. Libres. Oh, right. We, we drink rum there. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's really good, by the way. It's mm -hmm. like bourbon, only a little sweeter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had my share of rums, too. Somehow yeah. that doesn't surprise I me. I bet it doesn't. <laughs> so I, we have some other topics we would like to discuss, but you are welcome to stay. Would you like to stay? I would love to stay. We would love that, too. Oh, yes. you know, we're like this. Johnny Carson couch, you know. You oh, just, should you I slide over? Is that just, no, no, it's fine. No, because we don't have another guest. <laughs> we don't have oh. anymore. No. So you just Someday shut me up we'll is what have, you're we'll saying. We'll have guests out of our ears, but tonight we just... Right, and I don't know how much you know about local news, but that's what we're here to cover. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, last time we aired, uh, actually episode 17 of the Southern Oregon News Network, when, you know, the boys show, Sun. Now mm -hmm. we're the women's show, we're one. There is only one. And we're it. Yes. Uh, we just we started to cover a few issues here locally in Ashland, mm -hmm. and one was uh, the takedown of the arrest of Redwood in the Ashland Plaza. Mm -hmm. We wanted to follow How up. How could with you that. arrest a tree? 
Oh, gosh, it was really tough. It took, it took five <laughs> officers to do it. It did. Uh, but we already touched on that in our last episode a little bit. And mm -hmm. I found a story I found very interesting. Okay. About police and police dogs. Mm -hmm. And happening in Salem, the Salem Police Department here in Oregon, mm -hmm. there is a lady that raised her own funds to get the canine unit at the Salem Police Department their own body armor. So now canines in Salem will be fully protected. I just want to show you this clip. Hopefully we're hearing it too. A lifelong animal lover started Look, vested interests in canines, working that's tirelessly awesome. from home to raise that money. She's got a big heart. Very noble of this lady to, very noble of this lady to raise her own funds to just protect these dogs who actually do some of the police work. You know, they are the first responders. They go in before the police officers and they actually sniff out bombs, drugs, people. Uh, they're trained to do all sorts of things. So cats. Probably cats as well, although the cats aren't probably the, you know, the ones that have the criminal offenses against them. So I don't think the police are really going in looking for the cats. I think they're looking for the criminals. Mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. I think that's the point. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that's a, a wonderful idea, protecting mm -hmm. the dogs. No, nothing worse than a wounded dog. Right. Uh, especially when they're doing a job. So it's kind right. of some you sort know, of body armor or some sort of protective device. What's that there? thing on its face? Right. Yes, it's a it, it's muzzle, a I muzzle. And, you know, hopefully they'll even get body cams for these dogs. I think yes. that would be great to I actually have good. the, po because they are going to see the criminal first. Right, and they need to have what yeah. happens between the dog and the and the criminal, because maybe these dogs like have some hypnosis they do Ooh, on the yeah. criminal. Maybe they, they kind of lick like, them into yeah. submission. Right. Oh. Well, yeah. I thought that was your trick. I thought well, you did that. That's anyways. that's private. It's a secret that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> You might get licked into submission. Oh, maybe, maybe. After, the show. after the show. We can't show that on the air, actually. Finger licking good, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, but, you know, I think that I hope we have a canine unit here in Ashland. Wouldn't that be great? I know that it's really tough. They, it takes a lot of training, and uh, you have to put in for one of these dogs, and you have to have an officer that is trained to handle the dog, and then the officer actually lives with the dog, uh, or the sense. dog lives with the officer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it makes more sense companions. that the dog live with the officer. Right. That's one wonderful, and, and I, am, I assume they become very, very close. They do, and actually that's why we need to protect the dog, because it's very tough when an officer loses his partner, oh, yeah. and the dog's his partner out there. So, yeah. And they're I, great companions, and I'm sure mm -hmm. they're, they're great police officers too with their special skills and they their are. special abilities. And you know, as we become uh, more of a marijuana center, you know, we might have more of a need for, for a canine unit. Yes. There goes yeah. another one of my secret ingredients. <laughs> oh, see, <laughs> we, oh, that's perfect. we thought so. <laughs> Just keep them eating more, right? Yeah, yeah. I, we thought so. See, now we're getting to the secrets. Yes. Let's keep talking. Well, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get them all by tonight. That's um, right. Yes, yeah, you can challenge us to that. <laughs> so I know we wanted to keep you informed on our Sex in the Glass contest that we started talking about in episode 17. Yes, yes, very much so. We've been doing some thinking about this Sex in the Glass competition for winemakers out there. And we want to approach this with a little teaser. We have a poem for you that Joan wrote. Yes, and, I'm and very excited like, about this. So. Yes. Um, we're going to let her read her poem. We're just going to tell you a little bit about this contest, and we'll divulge more and more as the weeks go by. Don't worry, there's no rush. Once we have everything set up, we'll let you know what the due dates are and what the rules are. Yeah, there's no doing. wham, bam, thank you, man, for sex in the glass, okay? Right, we're going to take it slow and easy. Yes. Well, um, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to one sex in a glass, so Jana can find a wine that's badass. Join us on a journey that's really a treat. Does this Pinot taste of peaches or feet? Hmm. Is this Malbec chewy, flabby, or bright? Is this Merlot's finish a steely bite? Hmm. We love Rogue Valley wine and winemakers too. Just be careful of Jana if she winks at you. <laughs> 
We'll swirl, smell, and sip again and again while Jana approaches vinicultural men. We seek local winemakers with courage and sass to help us find the ultimate sex, sex in, in a, a glass. glass. <laughs> Thank you for that, Joan. Oh, thank We're you. hoping to kick off our Sex in the Glass contest in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Again, we'll keep you informed on the next episode and what the, what the rules are, what it will entail. But we're hoping to have a partnership with a local business that can actually uh, give us a platform to taste the wines mm. and maybe do a live episode at that location. That That's would be fun, yes. So if we approach you and you're a local business, you know, we'd like you to say yes. Say yes to Sex in the Glass. Yes. Yes, and maybe the colonel will come back and be one of our judges. I don't know. Would you? Are I you? would love to. However, I must say, however, that I thought you were going to go a completely different direction with the sex in the glass. Oh, what would you, what would you have said? <laughs> I just, I, I'd like to hear what, what you, you what think do you was going to happen in the glasses? there, colonel. Yeah. Well, it's a family this, show, this isn't it? This is a family show. Yeah, you know, sex in the glass is a metaphor. What is it a metaphor of? I mean, what is yeah. sex? Sex is juicy, and we desire it, and we think it's about it. We spend a lot of our lives thinking about it, mm -hmm. right? It's tempting. It's memorable. It's relaxing. It's, it's emotional. It's full of endorphins. Bonding experience. And yes. It's well, so why bottle it up and put it in a glass? Why not just drink it out of the bottle? Well, well, of course, too. So if there's a wine that has that kind of pull, you know, that kind of sensual. Yes taste explosion. This is our mission. Yes, to find, find it. Find that wine with a taste explosion. Yes. Yes. And also a cute winemaker. That's because true. Because it that just doesn't nice. hurt, right? You know, we want to have a good looking winemaker also. It, it's part of the contest. We, we always rate the wine and the winemaker. Yes. Extra points. <laughs> Extra points for being single. That makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. in my book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are a lot of women winemakers out there, so I think it'd be great to have you as a judge. To judge the women or the wine? Both. Both. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd be happy we need to. we need cross fertilization, as yes. as a good uh, vit, any good viticulturist would tell you. Well, what right. would sex in the glass be without good cross pollinization? Mm -hmm. That's yes. true. Great. Uh, what else did we want to talk about tonight? We have about five minutes. Oh, I believe. Okay. Um, well, what are we going to do next week besides sex in the glass? Do we have any ideas? Oh, we'll, next oh. next month. I don't, Next have enough, month. I don't have enough energy for a <laughs> weekly show. I know, it's like, Especially oh my God, not sex. a weekly show. I mean, I got worn out just talking about it, you know. It's like, oh my gosh. I know, I need to fan myself too. Yes. All right, well... Um, what are we going to talk about next week? Um, well, we want to focus on us uh, next month. We want to focus on local news rather than global news oh, because you know what? That's important. What? There is one thing I did want to talk about that oh. was a global news story. Oh, I right. think we could all agree that it's important mm -hmm. that we talk about this man in China who boarded a plane oh, with yes. his pet turtle dressed as a hamburger. Now, I I don't know if we have a photo of it, but if anybody saw this, they know. That this turtle looked like a turtle dressed as a hamburger. I mean, who are you fooling, really? And, and we're questioning, was this turtle abuse? I think so. Because or did the turtle enjoy it? Yes, maybe the turtle enjoys being a hamburger. Maybe he needs to go through a transition. You know, maybe he's a transgender turtle. He's a turtle he's, who's a really... Really a fast food. He's not an herbivore, maybe. He's maybe a carnivore. Maybe not, that's true. And he was just born as an herbivore. Yeah, and he just wants to break out of his shell. Yes. Right? I mean, I thought he looked pretty good in that hamburger suit. He did, and he looked very tasty. I mean, I would eat that turtle in a second. <laughs> what about you, Colonel? Well, Do you I like prefer turtle tortoises meat? myself. Oh, Those uh, oh. land creatures are much tastier than the ones that swim in the water. And they live uh, almost as long as you do. The tortoises last like hundreds of years. I have right. a big one. From right. From the Galapagos Islands. I got myself from that fellow that went down there and investigated the place. What was his name? Uh, Darwin? Yeah, that yeah. guy. Oh, Darwin. That guy. <laughs> yeah. He gave me one of them turtles as a, as a gift back uh, many, many years ago. It was oh. just a little tortoise back then. Uh -huh. uh, but now, now it's it pretty be big. Huge. Yeah, yes. it's huge. You should Do you see ever get it. on your turtle and just ride him and be like, <laughs> go, boy, go, ride my tortoise? I would uh, like to do that. Saddle him up with a little tortoise saddle? Yeah, or turn him into a hamburger. Yes. But he would so, be, uh, he would not be, he would be a... Be like a jumbo jumbo jack. Yes, he would be. I don't know. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. I know. <laughs> All this chicken and burger talk, and then, you know, sex and a glass just, I know, yes. just gets better and better every time we get together. It does. It? it does. 
And so, oh, so is this must be a photo of the plane that the gentleman boarded. <laughs> it's not as interesting as the turtle dressed as a burger, but you no, know, no, it's not. You can imagine it was a it was a turtle about the size of a hamburger, mm -hmm. maybe a little That's bigger. That's a big hamburger with lettuce on him and, and a bun, and, and he a, was like oh, he could he walk just... around with the hamburger on him. Right. It was it was a little confusing, but it I was wonder, so sweet. Do you think he had him in a little bag that in Chinese said McDonald's on it or maybe something? Maybe it did. It was very moving that this man loved his turtle so much that he would go to such an extreme True. to sneak him on the plane. Right. It's the kind of love you don't encounter often. Mm -hmm. The think. love between a man and his turtle oh, in that's China. That's true. Gosh. That's a little bit scary to me. <laughs> So, Snappy. you know, I think that this could be like a new line of clothing for turtles. You yes. know, hamburger wear. Pizza Tomatoes wear. Lines. Yeah. And your company could create turtle suits, out if little fried chicken turtle well, it's suits. it's not your company anymore. You've oh, already I'm gone sorry. over that's that. But right. this could be a new company, a yes, spin -off. It could be. We could franchise it. Yeah. yeah. Franchising worked good for me. I don't see why it wouldn't work shells. for the turtles. You know, you could have finger licking shells or something like that. You could, mm. you could, um... Yeah, you could do a spin-off of all kinds of things. For we could create disguises for not just turtles, maybe, but also small dogs and because yeah. you know they already snakes. look like wieners, some of them. That's true. But, you know, so I think you might be onto uh, something you there. Have <laughs> food meets meets animal, and you know where where does that crossover happen? Right, you know, you're cross dressing. Uh, an animal as a piece of food. And, you know, we need to let these animals express themselves and who they really are, their inner selves. That's true. Mm -hmm. And to experience. So, oh, never mind. I don't know why Donald's up there. Again. Why is he I, up I there think again? We were talking about animals. Because <laughs> we were talking about animals. They want me to do this. So that's what they're doing. He's an animal who disguises himself. So I that's guess it was, true. A, it was a perfect segue. He's wearing a turtle on his head. You know, that thing is alive, that thing on his head. That is a kind of turtle. Or a disguise. In a disguise. Yes. I've seen his hair moving around by itself yes. out in the fields. <laughs> I have. Well, I'd like you to take a photo of that next time so that I, I can will. see it because I've never seen it. I will bring you a clip. I've seen that on my Facebook feed. And oh. we know Facebook never lies. Never lies. No. That's right. That's right. So we have, we have one minute left. And yes. I think we need to take this moment just to say thank you for tuning in to the Women Only News Network. Thank you to the Colonel for being our, our guest. My pleasure. Uh, I'm not really sure what this is all about. And I Mine's don't really want to know what this is all about. <laughs> and I hope I never see it again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Mine's been my we last were getting doctor some visit. sort of uh, subtextual communication from our staff <laughs> yeah. that we haven't been able quite yet to figure to out. They're trying to us off and we're just not going to go there. <laughs> We're too classy for that. That's right. And Stay so classy, are you. Ashland. That's, That's right. our motto. Stay classy, Southern Oregon. Oh, we yeah. We believe in you, and we think you're classy, too. Yes. Oh, 10 seconds? Awesome. And uh, if you haven't seen The Wiz yet at OSF, go oh. see it. It's a fantastic show. Mm -hmm. And um, and support thank you. local businesses. Yes. Okay.